Here's an easy way to memorize major scales that works for every key. Once you've memorized the major scale and you can quickly and effortlessly see the shape that it makes on the keyboard, then playing that scale or playing actual music that uses it becomes so much easier. You may have already heard the whole step, whole step, half step pattern or formula to create a major scale, and that is correct and will give you the right answer. But I've got a bit of an upgrade to that which I think is important because I find that way of doing things forces beginners to think step by step too much. It's really important with lots of aspects of learning piano to get good at chunking information. That goes for reading, memorizing things, learning chord shapes and finger blocks, but we can also use it for this. So instead of seven steps, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, we can think of just two chunks and eventually you might be able to just see that as one. This helps you keep your eyes fixed on a wider view and not look at everything note by note which helps you look ahead. And when you can look ahead, you can keep up mentally with things and manoeuvre to get your fingers in the right place much smoother. So for example, with the E major scale, let's say I just got to this fourth note of the scale A and I was thinking step by step. I play the A and then the B and I might have forgotten that these two black notes were coming up, which means my hand is now in a position where I'm gonna have to twist round to reach the black notes. Whereas if I was looking ahead and I knew those notes were coming up, I would start off playing the A and the B with my hand forward so I can reach everything comfortably in one position and not have to twist or bend my wrist, which usually often causes a stutter and it's gonna stop you from getting scales faster. I've also got a worksheet available too, linked in the description, which has got every major scale on it, finger numbers, and the reminder of this learning method. You may know C major already, and although you probably wouldn't really need it for this particular scale because it's just a straight line, it is the best one to demonstrate the idea on. Starting from the root note of the scale, the first note of the scale, the note that we name the scale after, it does follow the whole, whole, half rule. So whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. But what if we looked at it as two blocks, this block of three notes, and then this block of four notes. Now for C, this does also happen to be the same as the finger blocks you would use, as it is for a few of them, but not all 12. The notes of the block of three are a whole step apart from one to two and two to three, and the notes of the block of four are a whole step apart from four to five, five to six, and six to seven. So here you can see clearly those two blocks. Then the two blocks are separated by a half step from three to four. Remember, it's always useful to number the notes of a scale and know what numbers it is that you're using. So all the pattern is then is a block of three, half step up, and then a block of four. That's a clear way of looking at the pattern. So you can do that from any of the 12 notes and create a major scale. The pattern has to be the same for it to be a major scale, otherwise it's gonna sound different. Just hit the same note again at the top that you started on. Or if you're gonna do more than one octave, you just do a half step from the block of four back to a block of three and then repeat. So you get this, three, half step, four, half step, three, half step, four, and then finish. Seeing those blocks as one shape might feel a bit tricky as a beginner, but you can get good at it pretty quickly like this. All you have to do is build up to it. First practice finding two notes a whole step apart. Now the thing is that some of those whole steps will look different. Some will be two white notes. So remember this is a whole step because there's another note in between. So that would be a half step and two half steps is a whole step. Some will be two black notes, like for example here, as there's still one white note in between. So half step, two half steps equals one whole step. And some will be opposite colors. And that's gonna be in these areas here and here where there's two white notes in a row without a black note. So here, here, here and here. So watch out for those. With all of these, you should practice finding some random ones. So test yourself or get someone to call out notes to start from. So they could say uh, C sharp, for example, you go to C sharp and play C sharp and a whole step above, or they say G, you play G and a whole step above, or you could go up in half step. So you could do start from C, then start from C sharp, start from D, start from D sharp, 
and so on till you can go up and down comfortably. Then when that feels comfortable and you can see them easily, go for three notes together. So you do exactly the same thing, just another time. Let's do F as an example. Whole step from F and then a whole step from that note. But try and sort of see it in one go. That may take a bit of practice and then get them all down. So whole step, whole step. If I do that from E, it would be this. Whole step, whole step. Again, try and see it in one go as quick as you can. Uh, from A flat, it would be this. Whole step, whole step. Again, you can practice them just the same way by picking random notes or going up and down in half steps. And finding a block of three is the same thing as finding the first three notes of a major scale. Then when you can do three, it's not too much more of a challenge to do four. So for example, four from C would be this. There's a whole step, there's a whole step, and there's a whole step. Remember, always try and see them in one block, in one go, as one shape. That bit's really important. And when you do play a block of four like that, that's like playing the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh notes of a major scale, so the top block. And once you can see a block of three easily and a block of four easily, you just do three and then four with a half step in between them. Let's do G major as a first example. So from the note G, a block of three, then a half step up, and from that note, you make a block of four, giving you one black note. Hit the root again at the top, and you've got your scale. So here's an example in E major. Block of three from E. Half step up. From that note, we start a block of four. And then play the E again at the top. Let's do one more. Let's do B major. So from the note B, a block of three. Half step up. And from that note, a block of four. Hit the root at the top. But do try this out in all 12 keys and try and use it when you're using different major scales. I'll do individual videos for different scales as I'll need to get more in depth with each one with technique and fingers and stuff like that. Just a reminder, I've got that worksheet available too linked in the description, which I think you'll find really useful to have something in front of you you can check easily and would also help support the channel loads. And there's also this book to check out I would recommend if you're a reader and you want two octaves of each scale in every key written out. Plus it's got loads of other stuff too and it's really cheap. There's a link to that in the description too. Let me know in the comments if that trick helps you and also is there any aspects of learning scales, finding them or playing them or using them that you struggle with? Leave a comment because I want to use people's answers to make sure I cover any common issues in other videos. Just to point out there's other methods that can help you memorize these too like learning your key signatures and obviously just playing them loads as well. Please give the video a like if you got something out of it and subscribe for more content that's going to help you develop your piano playing and make sure to hit the notification bell too so you know when there's a new video out. Thanks for watching.